Hello, hello. Um, welcome, everybody. Ricardo Wilkins here. Uh, I have my coffee. This is another coffee with the cowbell. And uh, what's interesting about doing live streams, as I check my audio here, what's interesting about a live stream is when the neighbors are mowing the lawn during your live stream. And it's, uh, it's interesting to see if that's going to come through. I'm hoping uh, you're all good on, on your end. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna keep it rocking and rolling. So as always, um, depending on where you're joining from, uh, you may uh, have chat. I'm trying my best to uh, monitor that chat. See what we can do there. Um, and we're gonna rock and roll. So this is part four, probably the final part of this series. Um, that I've been trying to do on guest collaboration. Um, and uh, so we took it through a, a couple of different scenarios. Hopefully I've kind of, you know, made the, the point through all of these that it can be very easy to collaborate with external folks and that they are that there are some unique scenarios to collaborating in teams with internal folks as well. Uh, for many of you, that's the majority of your collaboration in teams is uh, internal um, and so it's nice to know that there are some uh, some creative ways to do that and then of course making a differentiation between collaboration whether internal or external in meetings versus in uh, you know actual teams okay so um, and, yeah, and if anybody's got any questions or comments about uh, any of that any of the sessions that we've had so far happy to uh, answer those in in the chat as well if, if I can. I'm gonna switch here. I do a couple things here, but I'm gonna switch to I have uh, da, 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 right here. And um, let me try a couple things here. So I've got several tenants going at one time here, and hopefully it's not too confusing. I'm gonna simplify it a little bit here in a sec I did want to check this one uh, ba -ba -ba -da -da -da. and uh, okay so that's good all right so that's Bob this is Ricardo in the government cloud and this is Ricardo in the um, commercial cloud and I think I'm going to stay here for the moment all right so um, you know as last time we did talk about you know the, the share channel concept it's this channel here with the with the uh, new looking logo reminder this is still in preview I don't have a date for when this goes uh, general availability so we are looking at a pre at a uh, a tenant that has preview feature features turned on that is a th that is something you can do on your tenant as well it does give you access to preview features so keep that in mind uh, again what is a, what it allows us to do is this as you can kind of see here is give access to two uh, people um, and I met this is what I don't think I showed last time um, uh, let's see if I come here so I've shared this channel in retail with Bob and uh, am, am I to have the right Bob this is Bob yes that's the right Bob and uh, what am I looking for here share it with Bob uh, da -ba -da -ba -da. I might not have the right Bob so I got too, I got too many VMs open and um, some of them are not correct Looking da, 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 da. Yeah, one sec, and I say that hitting it's not a hidden team. I 
I feel like I'm missing it somewhere. But um, sharing that channel with Bob and on my side, it looks like retail with all the rest of my channels on Bob's side. It would just show uh, the channel shared with them. Okay. So all that's gr great. Um, and again, this keeps us from tenant switching in order to collaborate, right? And uh, we, uh, we interact in that team as almost as if we were all a part of the same org. So now that we have figured out how to like get people in our tenant and uh, you know, whether it's a guest with capital G or whether it's uh, this new shared channel concept, you know, then it's about, you know, some clever ways to collaborate. And so again, the, the first uh, nice benefit I think is that you bring people in and uh, you know they have access to some degree equal access if that's a good phrase to the files area where as a guest um, I'll go here I think I may do I have some files in here I thought I did. you know they can not just view files here but also create edit and of course don't forget delete I can change those permissions as needed but um, you know they come in as, as equal collaborators which is good and one of the ways that are or one of the file types that uh, people use to collaborate obviously your standard office files word excel powerpoint but one note is also a popular one and uh, you know if you were to if you go to my channel there's, there are several videos about one note some comparing one note to whiteboard um, but I am a big OneNote fanatic for many, many years. So I tr I appreciate the p power of OneNote. And I also appreciate that Teams treats it well, right? In, in, the, in the sense that, you know, in this list of these, these, these spotlight file types that you can make easily, Visio being one of the newest. Um, so many of you have been around a while you know that that's kind of cool to see Visio as a as a type that can be created and started and edited right within teams this is kind of just a little side detour here but uh, for for many of you longtime Visio users I don't know if you realized that this was there but seeing this uh, within teams and being able to create a, a Visio you know right in teams is is, is pretty cool that's not that's not where I was going with that I, that was just a little detour I took there but I was trying to make a OneNote document um, I'll call that uh, I have the worst naming uh, for demos but uh, we're making a OneNote document here happens in seconds all right we got our title you know our sections and pages already ready to go we can get going with this. Obviously, we could do more than text. I mean, I, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the pen and drawing inside of uh, OneNote. I mean, this is a big deal too. Even uh, it, it took a while for OneNote to get into the browser, and it took a while for for pen actions to uh, uh, be able to occur in the browser. So, if I had my Surface Pen, which is around here somewhere in teams with one note I could be writing directly into one note in teams it seems like a simple thing but if you've been using one note long enough you'll know that that's a cool that's a pretty cool thing at least to me all right so I got some stuff going on here so a couple things I just wanted to show about and it's really not just one note but uh, your office files in general and again, keep in mind we're we're using a scenario where not just internal but external people are using these these uh, files uh, as well. Uh, so I've made this one note. It's automatically stored in the files area, which means it's automatically visible and accessible to everyone in the team. That is that tends to be a big deal as well because back in the day you would make a file and uh, you would wonder. Or, or mistakenly try to sh share the file with someone and you didn't have, have the right permissions. And then you go back and you change it and, okay, here, try the file again, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, I love the, the fact that I can put a file in here and I immediately know 
unless I've changed permissions, I immediately know it's accessible to the whole team. That whole can they see it thing goes away. And uh, I see you, Gary. Hi, hi from uh, to hi Tampa, Florida, representing today tonight. <laughs> um, so uh, so that's great. And then what's also great is you saw me click this this uh, conversation button here. I'll make it a little bigger in case you missed it. Conversation up here. So now we're talking the team specific parts of using OneNote here. I've got a OneNote document. I'm I'm rocking and rolling with it. You know, maybe it's bigger than just these one one pages. Maybe it's got you know lots of pages and lots of sections. So it's becoming an important uh, you know notebook for us. And now we want to start actually having conversations about what's going on in here. So, for instance, you know, uh, okay, you know, check. Uh, let's see, oops. Uh, you know, check out my handwriting. All right, and I'll uh, at mention Nestor. All right. Um, so we've got a con the, we've got the conversation about the file right next to the file. Okay. So somebody else comes and opens this. They in Teams they've got access to Teams. Now where is that actually happening? It's happening out here in the post area. There's my check out my handwriting. There's a convenient link. If I click it, opens up OneNote in Teams. Uh, you know, don't don't miss the fact that the convenience of this. I didn't have to wait for this to open in the desktop app or the browser opened up right in Teams. OK, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, and of course, we can continue this conversation, whether we continue it here in the chat you know, or post area or whether we continue it, um, you know, here with the conversation button just to kind of prove that the, they are the same I'll, I'll uh, you know make a reply out here All right so we're having a conversation out in, ch in the uh, channel area it's the same conversation that we will see with the <laughs> uh, oh that was a did I hit the wrong button oh, let's start that again same conversation no way <laughs> what just happened what did I do no way that's I don't believe it let's do this and close that no way I have trouble believing it. I don't know what just happened. It's only it's only when you try to demo something that these things happen. I, that's weird. All right, we got a, another chat thing going. That's so weird. Anyway, I'm going to just ignore that. <laughs> but I am going to click it one more time. It is starting up new every time. I'm going to ignore that. I don't know what's going on there. I'm just going to ignore that. But anyway, where the reason I came here to, to do this is uh, the following. So you saw me create it. It's in the files area. That's cool. You could tell someone, hey, go in the files. I got a, a notebook there. Uh, they can open it from the files area. They can also, if they you know, don't necessarily appreciate the magic of, of doing OneNote in Teams, they can open it in the browser or the desktop app, right? Um, I like to open it in the OneNote for Windows 10, and it'll have the same content. They won't have the conversations about it. Those, those are not; those are team specific. They're not going to come over to the uh, app. But other than that, they're going to get the same stuff here, right? So they can do that. Uh, continue here actually I'm gonna close this where else can it surface and again the, I'm kind of trying to highlight why working with these files and teams has a little added value than maybe what you have been doing in the past you you get the benefit of the stuff you have liked from before working in the browser working in a desktop app working in SharePoint but you get some other things as well so we could certainly open this in, in SharePoint see the file there 
the other one, opening or, or accessing this in a tab. There's my OneNote button. It's going to bring up all the notebooks that I have access to. I want this one. And in fact, maybe I specifically want the uh, page. I think that's the page that I was working on. Let's, uh, I think it was this section. Yeah, that was it. I'll hit save. All right, now um, I'm gonna do that one more time. Actually, let's do one thing here. Let's go to this one, uh, of course. Let's go, let's see any of these. I was gonna say this thing really wants to not work during demo. I'm just making a new page here. I'm gonna do a new tab, OneNote. I hope I'm not going too fast same notebook find it may not have synced it i may be going too fast for the syncing process but uh, i think i was in the wrong section there we go two 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 uh save that so what's significant here and this is this is this it might be cooler for people who have used OneNote a while is what I just did here is made two convenient tabs for my team not just to the notebook to say hey uh, you know get in there and uh, um, find you know find the file and you know where you want to go and all of that but um, just to the specific page on that notebook um, so so that is nice as well but the the other or maybe the last thing I wanted to show here is um, so let's say I'm using this notebook to take some notes that I then maybe instead of a tab want to, want to share in a different way so I'm going to oh I'm I already got this open let's just do this here I wanna I've taken notes in this 222 page I want to share it with team members I, I'm going to right click here and copy a link to this page. Okay. I'm going to come out here. And in fact, I may do this differently. But uh, yeah, let's, let's stick with this. I'm going to say here's the notes I created. And I'll make this a little bigger in a second. Um, and. I'm gonna, uh, if I make it bigger for you. Here's the notes I created. I've got this link to the notebook. I've also got this nice thumbnail to it and it's telling me that the permissions are set for people with existing access, meaning the people who already have access, which is everyone in this team. We just talked about those files automatically being shared to the team. All right, so, um, and, and then I'll go ahead and post that now here so here's a couple things that I think is good and I, I should have read that message that they that we just had maybe I can bring that up one more time yeah remember we're in a shared channel teams is reminded me here that users outside your org may not have access some people in your tenant also may not have access now or in the future please upload a copy of the file you know it's recognizing that there there could be different permissions than the default you know for for this link I'm using again I like that I, I just feel like teams and and really office in general these days is just very cognizant of the old school problem of sharing something and uh, the permissions not being correct you know that I, I know that has happened to me often you share something they come back I, I can't it's not working for me you go back you change it so all tool tips messages all of these things here including this you know drop down here to help us get it right the first time and minimize the frustration of the people we're trying to share with uh, so for instance this notebook if I didn't like this people with existing access 
I get my standard share. You know, I, I click the drop down there. I get my standard sharing options um, where I could make this sharing this particular sharing even broader. Maybe instead of just the people in the team, I want to make this share link uh, accessible for anybody in the org. Uh, you know, just to be sure that it's accessible. Things like that. All right. I don't think I need this. Uh, I don't need this second one. So get rid of that. All right. And again, another reminder here that we're in a channel shared with members in other orgs. And I'm wondering what that takes us to. Okay, that just takes us to let us know who those members are. Okay, so we're seeing the different orgs that they're in. Um, we got to remember this is they. They look the same. These are two different contosos. All right. Uh, so here's where I here's the other reason why I think this is cool. You're looking at three, I think I believe it's three different ways to hit to open this one note based on this one post that I've just done. So again, trying to use the scenario of I've just taken notes for the team. I want to share those notes um, you know, with the team. Certainly that notebook's in a notebook. They could go find it, go browse for it, but I want to make it easier for them, right? So I've given them a link directly to the page with the notes. Probably should have named it better. The first, the, let's start with the thumbnail. On the, the three dots here, you see that I get, I'm getting all kind of convenient options as the receiver of this post on how I want to open this. I may I may like it in the desktop app browser or even directly in Teams. I'm getting all of those options from the three dots. If if for some reason I ignored that or or um, you know just clicked this uh, straight up, it's going to open in Teams. Very convenient, very quick. Imagine that this was full of great notes that I was that I wanted to see. So that's the thumbnail. The other one, web view, and again, this this look and feel here, this uh, that we're now talking about, would be the same as if I put this link in a um, in a email, which I could probably just show that easily, right? Because should be still be in my clipboard. Control V. It's the same um, same look and feel, right? But I'll stay in here for a sec. So web view, I click that. It is opening the web version. Okay, um, so that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. And then opening this one again gives me the option for for the desktop. So it's a small thing, but I think I just think it's uh, important as you as you kind of think about the uh, enabling your teammates with easy access to these things. With one click, they they have their choice of opening in you know the desktop the web or the or teams with just a click without really any very much thought if they wanted to use the three dots to think about it they, they get all three of those options there as well again that's a little more exciting again if you've used one note in the past where it was a little more challenging to share and while yes uh you know your sh the whole notebook is shared Again, remember these links are going to take people directly to a particular page uh, on that, and so because OneNote, you know, a, a, a popular OneNote notebook in, for your team could get pretty large, and uh, you don't want to have to just bring them to the beginning of the OneNote notebook and then have them search for what they're looking for. And all that being said, remember now that this is a channel where these guests can come in here and look at it as well, and so especially once this notebook starts getting bigger and having a lot of content in it, that ability to share a particular page uh, from here uh, really becomes uh, very useful. One day those things will sync up, I guess. All right. So I did want to describe that. And so I've used that in real life, you know, with teammates um, to share, to share notebooks. And then of course, if the page is, you know, popular or important enough, you know, giving it its own tab there is useful. It also uh, highlights yet yeah, one more way of sharing that page is copy link to tab. 
so you know now I can post a link and maybe I can try it here uh, control V it, it looks simple enough I mean it is simple but that is a link that's not a that's a link to really a fourth way to open this which is in the tab that is the same as opening OneNote in Teams but if you notice it's the tab meaning I get still get to see my teams and uh, everything else around it that is different than opening it in teams and now getting it full screen there are some listening right now that is that are saying doy or uh, you know what's the big deal there are some like me that have used OneNote a long time and remember the days when sharing wasn't that easy that are saying wow hopefully you're saying wow I think that's cool okay because it, it just really uh, it increased the to me increased the value and the shareability of OneNote for my for team members in my opinion okay so I wanted to uh, call out that that scenario there and encourage you to uh, you know consider using OneNote more in in consider using OneNote more in Teams. Okay, I think the last thing I probably should have showed is just uh, again showing it in the in the browser in the files area, and out here we still get we get it as a it and Visio as kind of these first class citizens even out in the OneNote space as well. Okay. Very good. So, um, in a recap, since I, I feel like this is, pro you know, I probably beat to death the, the guest collaboration concept. Just to recap and kind of put a bow on this, we've talked about at, uh, working with guests, lowercase g, meaning anonymous people who don't authenticate to your tenant in a meeting talked about working with guests capital G who are authenticated users in your tenant that get all these nice rights to collaborate with you and we're talking about the next level of that that's coming at some point the shared channel concept where those same capital G get well, those same guests uh, have an even more elegant more seamless experience for collaborating with you using channels that from their perspective are embedded right within the rest of their teams and without tenant switching. And when all of that is done, you get the beauty and value of everybody working together on these cool files that are teams friendly, desktop friendly and browser friendly. All right. So, and I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> um, so yeah, so hopefully that, uh, it is cool I will certainly on this platform let you know as soon as uh, I see that shared channels have hit uh, general availability again I don't know the, the date uh, to this point but looking forward to it so that everybody can really uh, be able to access the value there um, as well all right so I hope this was uh, helpful hope you enjoyed your decaf coffee because it's late and uh, this has been coffee with the cowbell all right and uh, all right have a go <laughs>